I really hadn't thought of this as the financial segment of the show. But if you're going to invest in anything, it might not be a bad idea to look at Starbucks stock, particularly because of the real content of this interview with our friend, Dr. Mark Hong. Dr. Hong, you are a highly respected urologist in our community. How do you react to all the erectile dysfunction commercials, radio, television, newspaper? I mean, it's gotten to be more than the car ads. Yeah, but you can't escape uh, a sporting event these days on TV or uh, you know on ESPN or whatever uh, without seeing multiple ads for erectile dysfunction uh, medications, supplements, whatever they are, late night. You know, it, it's it's all over the place. Yeah, but it, are there that many and that many millions of dollars spent in advertising because of the vanity of guys. Yeah. Well. It's part in the term, but it's a growing industry. I think that. <laughs> See, you can't, you can't possibly talk about this without some in temptation to, to do humor. And my response is really to go out and buy Starbucks stock. <laughs> <laughs> Why the effect of caffeine kind of surprised me. Well, you know, so coffee has gotten a bad rap for many years. Now it's getting a good rap. It's sort of on its upswing these days because some studies have shown some links that show benefit to coffee intake or caffeine intake. Why? We don't actually know as scientists. Uh, and I think scientists will bitterly debate this kind of thing. Uh, but the newest study, of course, does associate a higher caffeine or coffee intake with uh, improved erectile function. Well, since I'm enjoying my 17th cup this morning, uh, let me ask about how much is too much? How much coffee should the average guy consume during the day to make any difference in his love life? Well, first of all, Pat, I have to give you the disclaimer. If there's something going on that lasts for four, more than four hours, you really need to come talk to me or, uh, you know, we need to get you some help. It but, takes uh, me that long to make a cup of coffee. <laughs> But, uh, when uh, we're talking about intake of caffeine, yes, though, so, how much? You know, the, the, one of the problems and issues I have with the study, of course, is that they, they had to drink relatively large amounts of, of coffee in order to get the, the supposed benefits on the rectal Well, what side. is relatively large For example, amounts? Uh, let's say three to six cups of coffee uh, a day. And, um, you know, I think that uh, everyone's individualized. So first of all, when you brew a cup of coffee that has variable amounts of caffeine, depending on how you brew it. Uh, and also, uh, in terms of how your body might metabolize the, the coffee, everyone's a bit different. Uh, we know that at, uh, at higher levels of cof coffee intake, you're going to get the jitters, you're going to get insomnia. So there are potential downsides to all this. Uh, but in this subset of men who uh, took this dose of uh, caffeine, uh, it did show some modest improvement in erectile function. Uh, and it was relatively modest. Uh, but I think it's an intriguing study to think about what are some of the mechanisms behind why coffee would help with erectile function. Tell us. I, it ultimately comes down to blood flow. And if you think about how uh, we get an erection, let's just talk the birds and the bees for a sec, uh, it actually starts up here in the mind. Uh, you have to have some trigger, some, uh, something that uh, you know, will we'll send nerve signals down from your brain through the spinal cord that then triggers the uh, uh, arteries that feed the penis itself to uh, dilate, basically, and to uh, increase the blood flow to the member. Uh, that's actually how medicines like Viagra work, is to increase the blood flow. And so the, the thought is that the, the coffee and the caffeine might have some effects in that way. All right, but if it begins all the way up here, uh, there are a lot of things going on from the neck up that have to be treated too, right? That's right. Uh, there are several heads uh, involved in this kind of thing. And the bottom line is uh, sexual function is so complex that it's hard to pick out any one thing and say this is it. For example, I think it's a bit of a disservice going back to your uh, question to me earlier about all these ads and stuff. It, we as a society have come to think of uh, erectile function as one of these things where, well, look, uh, for example, if I as a urologist can get you uh, some, uh, uh, some, something that, that uh, functions well, uh, a member that functions well, well, that must mean that you're having great sex. Well, is that the case? And 
you know, we, we don't even talk about where the partner's role is in this and also what are some of the psychological aspects of, of wellness and also of uh, sexual well-being. Now, caffeine, from what I was reading in advance of your visit, also may have a positive effect on diabetes? Yeah, there's some uh, studies, again, associative studies, so it doesn't, uh, we don't know about causation, but we know that uh, caffeine, moderate caffeine intake has been associated with a lower risk of diabetes, and there's some other health benefits similar to that. Uh, heart disease, the, again, the literature is a bit uh, uh, muddled there. Uh, but uh, I think the, the bottom line of all this is that we are starting to see some uh, studies showing the health benefits of caffeine. Uh, now, it's, uh, it's also worth mentioning some other sources of caffeine. You know, you've got uh, uh, teas, and actually we know that uh, green tea uh, has been well studied, and it actually has anti-cancer type uh, properties, and it actually in many ways has more caffeine than per brew than coffee. And I think, uh, and there's even some compounds in green tea that might even um, um, calm you or, or soothe you. And so it's possible that some of this uh, can be had from alternative sources of caffeine, such as uh, a high quality green tea. And I'm personally a big fan of green tea, actually. Probably <coughs> wouldn't be a bad idea to make sure that you have a urologist as part of your life, huh? Well, you know, sooner or later, everyone needs one. When you're talking about uh, these problems though, uh, the key to success is we can acknowledge not only in the coffee cup but also from the neck up uh, and having a good doctor, Dr. Hong, uh, who by the way has a plaque in, inside his office that says, I don't know what's wrong, this has never happened to me before. Uh, this is Pat McMahon on the Morning Scramble.